Welcome to the Strategy Mob Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of Strategy Mob. Today, I have a very special guest all the way from California because it's hot in California. You guys are punks because I'm sitting here like freezing. I got the heat on, by the way. Um, I, <laughs> I have the one, the only, the oh so famous Mr. Peter Duffy in the house. Peter, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? It's doing, really good to see you, man. I'm doing well, Thank man. you for having me on. Well, you know what? We, we got, it was about, what, four months ago we got the jam, and we just had so much fun. I was like, we got to we gotta do this again. And I just thought it'd be cool to catch up with you and just so many things have changed with you guys. Definitely. You guys have done some pretty cool initiatives. I thought we'd chat a little bit about that. But before we get into that, um, let's start off today with a little origin story so the people that are watching or listening right now got some context of who you are and how you got started in the business. So what is the origin story that is Peter Duffy? Yeah. Uh, so 2009, um, a couple guys hired me to do uh, photos at their uh, dealership. They built the studio, didn't know how to use it. Um, I was struggling photographer slash mortician still. Uh, I'd been a mortician for about 10 years at that point. And so kind of embalming bodies on the side. And then I'm also uh, new side, shoot also. weddings, this sort of things. Yeah, it was, it was something else. And so uh, then, uh, you know, they gave me another dealership, another dealership. And I kind of saw the writing on the wall. And, uh, you know, fast forward to 2016, we had about 35 dealers and 23 24 photographers. So good little business. Um, but we really realized that it, it was going to go digital. And um, so uh, sitting around with some uh, really close friends of mine, moving into some new offices, um, we, I, they kind of said, Peter, you got to get the dealer. You got to put the power back in the dealer's hands to shoot their own photos because we couldn't reach those dealers that had 50, 60 you know, units a month in the middle of Missouri and so I came up with the idea of using wireframe guidelines to capture the cars and then the, those photos would come back to us and that we would edit and publish them every day. And then, um, you know, fast forward to today, I don't know, we have 160 dealers probably in three countries uh, in most of them in the United States here, Mexico, picked up a, a dealer in Dubai, um, really good bunch of guys That's there so um, cool. over the pandemic. Um, and they're getting what they want. And the ultimate uh, thing here is that they want consistency. That was the number one thing I got asked when we used cameras. And this is now the yeah. number one thing that we're using, uh, the guidelines for. So, um, it's, it's been, it's been a great run and, and we're looking forward to keeping, uh, continuing on. Well, and you know, I thought that's what was kind of cool about what you guys were doing and also the product and tool that you guys have out there is consistency. Consistency is the name of the game for everything. For I anything. mean, like for anything, look, we were talking about it earlier, just about the new studio I have and the content that yeah. I'm putting out there, right? Like, I, it, it's just consistency. That's it. Like, I don't- You even, do it every day. I, I do it every day. It. And I just, but I, I get better all the time. I still look at myself as an amateur content creator, um, but every single time I hit the red button and I get started, it just continues to get better. And, and I'm sure you probably- I'm amazed thing with... how you put it all together every day. <laughs> like, I just, I know you I have, have a team- A lot and, of help, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But it, it, it really is like a consistent flow of decent information, good information. Um, and it's also entertaining. And like, I think those guys standing out front of the car dealer selling cars and doing whatever, every one of them is on LinkedIn nowadays. That's my yeah, that's whole true. thread. Um, and to see you come up and, you know, spew a little gold uh, on us is, you know, it's entertaining and, and we appreciate it. I, I think people appreciate that. Well, you know what? I look at it as, as at bats. And, and I actually love the fact that you actually said decent because you know what? Sometimes we put stuff out there. Is, no, 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 no. Actually, you know, no. I actually yeah, think it's yeah. a good thing. I think it's a good thing because I don't, like, I, in no way or form do I ever think my content's great. Um, and I feel like every once in a while, I feel like a piece. You know what the funny thing is? And I never even know which piece it is. <laughs> but it's like yeah. some piece will go out there and it just connects with people. And then you ever try to duplicate right. it. It is so difficult, right? Um, yeah. But it's just, but it's those at-bats. Every single time I get up to the plate, I swing. We put something out there. Your... 
and he just improved. Record. And it, it's the same thing. Look, I actually see that same analogy work with dealerships, uh, merchandising efforts, right? I mean, yeah. I think I'll be honest with you for years as an industry, we've been stepping to the plate every single time a, a used car comes in or a new car comes Striking in. Striking out. <laughs> Dude, we're just swinging like blindfolded. And yeah. I feel like that's where your system removes that blindfold by giving me a consistent process. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about that. I, I know this is not a plug, but I, I just love what your system does so much and I love the consistency it brings. And I just, I want dealers to know what the consistency is. So, so walk me through the process, how you got started, how you came up with that idea. Do you know the book, Good to Great? Oh yeah, it's, one, yeah, it's a great Jim, one. It's one of my Jim favorites. Collins, uh -huh. right? So it took me a while just cause I ain't that smart, right? So it took me a while to really, <laughs> uh g dig my teeth into that book and i actually had to do it in audio and i was redoing the master bedroom during uh quarantine uh for my wife she bought a bed so we did the whole fucking thing which was ridiculous but it's done now and uh so my point was is that what i really figured out during the last i would say four months uh into quarantine is what we are compared to what we were or mm -hmm. what we thought we were so our system, even though you know, you're know you using the technology, the technology is just the tool. The company behind the tool is the fundamentals, the process, and the discipline. And what is the difference between all the technologies that are out there for photography is you can have a product and that's what they give you and they will claim the world. And I've had the dealers come to me. You can, they'll claim the world, they give you the uh, app and the, or whatever it is, on, you put it on your phone yep, or yep. whatever it is, and nobody fucking does it. And that's no way forward. What you need is to have that plan behind it and have the knowledge of the fundamentals of uh, editing and light and whether you're doing things outside or inside and really take that off the dealer's plate. And what I've told the dealers is, if you give me a willing candidate, like someone that actually gives a shit about what they're doing, you give me a place to shoot. You thirdly, let them know that's what you're doing. And you enforce that and allow us to do that and give us a, a integration uh, permission. Yeah, yeah. We will get you a good set of photos. That's the easy part. I've done that a hundred times. I could do it in my sleep. The main part is how do we organize that photographer? And that is the onboard you know, inventory lists and feeds and all the things that goes on with this iPad Pro that we put this case around and called Photo Assistant. And so you can give a dealership an app and you can claim that it's only $500. I don't care what it is. For money. <laughs> the point is, is they will fail because it's been done. And so it what you process. need is it needs, it needs that you process. got to have the company behind it. You got to have the company behind it. it. Otherwise, so going back to good to great, what I learned is we do technology and we use technology for the tool, but what we are is a fundamental process and discipline company. And that has proved us well. And that's the team. Like I don't do all this myself. We have, you know, people that train these guys. And if we're not getting what we want, we climb it up the ladder and make sure that that GM uh, knows that there's a solid process of editing and quality control that goes into every single photo, paper floor mats, crooked steering wheels, <laughs> lights or windows aren't up on the exterior shots, whatever it is, we flag it and get to that photographer same next day or immediately. Hey, this is what you did wrong. This is how you can make it better. And we watch that. If it doesn't happen, we're telling your boss and that's how it's going to go. And I think that's where those other, um, you know, I don't talk back about any other companies, but I think that's where they may be falling short. I hope I don't give away all my secrets. <laughs> no, no, look, look, it, it's it's not enough just to have the product. You have the service, you have to have the service that goes along with the product. And I think yes. that's what me and you are so in sync with that. And I think that's just why we've connected so well, you know, with my products, and my, you know, our website solution and our, our marketing tools, you know, it, it's, it, look, it, service and products have always kind of been, you have like service companies and you have product companies. And for some reason, they were always kind of separate from each other. But I, both of us don't believe that's necessarily the case. you got to service the living crap of the product. The product's only as good as how well you service it. Um, right. You know, I remember I had the sales manager. Talk about discipline. Um, of course, ex-military. So, you know, where discipline and consistency and routine and process was sure. literally a, not, not just a good idea, but a, a life and death. <laughs> you know, it's just like this is what you had to do in this idea. Yeah, yeah, it. right, right. And, right. and I just remember um, him always really struggling how other people didn't understand that. 
and, and because it was so embedded and a part of of his life, it was, he, he struggled to figure kind of figure that one out, right? Um, but right. but but as he kind of continued to grow as a sales manager, and watching continue to grow as a sales manager, is is the that commitment, that discipline was so infectious that it went beyond just the sales and it started getting implemented throughout the entire culture of the dealership. And it can start, it can start with something as little as how the hell you take your pictures. I, I know, look, I know people are probably listening to this going, wow, that sounds pretty corny. We take great like, pictures. We take great pictures, but, but, but no, no, it, look, the customer sees it. The consistency of your marketing efforts, the consistency of your pictures says, like, it's not words that, that necessarily have to describe your business or why I want People to do with your business. People think in pictures. Yes. It's like, it's, I see that commitment. Yeah. Like, I see that commitment. It's like when I go, I'll give you another example, one, maybe one that, you know, other dealerships are listening or watching right now might connect with. I my one of my biggest pet peeves biggest pet peeves is i go onto a, a dealership's uh google reviews and i see all these reviews and nobody responds to them not a single person responds to them mm, yeah that's not good it, it's horrible it, it look it's a little tiny thing but what it tells me as a consumer is you just don't care <laughs> Right. Like, yeah. Like, I, okay. People might go, Jason, that's not true. Not everybody thinks that, but a lot of people do. All right. You can show how, how passionate you are about what you do by these little tiny things. And I, and I think you, you do the exact same thing. By the attention to detail that, that you're doing. I, I recently was in uh, Spokane. I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but uh, Jim Bowman is a GM of Lithia uh, of Camp Chevrolet and BMW. And basically what he said was, by doing this and showing this to our customers, the minute they walk in the door, they're informed, they've seen what the car really looks like, and they appreciate that I've taken the time or that I care enough to present them my product in a way yes. that's professional. You care that when it. they walk through the door, they bring that car around and they feel like they've already seen it. They got a beautiful video, beautiful set of photos, and now the car is in front of them. And it's all part of that experience. And like the trouble that I often have, and you might be able to help with this, but how do you measure that? I mean, you can measure it in clicks. And do we get more clicks? Do we get more VDPs? And that's fine. Um, but there's so many other moving parts to a dealership uh, in terms of sales and things that need to be done at a dealership that affect that actual sale. Like you can have a dealership that's bad oh, yeah, and have great photos. You might not see a great improvement or you can see a dealership that's really well run with bad photos and then they get good photos or they get more of them online to get that time to market and, um, and everything improves and you can see it immediately. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty trippy uh, thing, but it, measuring that experience I think Google did it with the reviews, as you're saying, you know. Um, well, it, but, it is. Uh, it's, it's measuring. You, it's measuring. To you know what? You will love this. Um, I used to have a meeting with my sales managers uh, once a week. It would always be over yeah. lunch where we could just casually have a conversation. I called it the little things meeting. And it was just time to take. It wasn't a lot of time. 30, 45 minutes, maybe tops, all right, that we took once a week out of our very busy schedule, running around and trying to get everything done is just to discuss the little things. Because I'll tell you right now, when you talk to customers, all right, on ultimately why they bought from you or why they chose your dealership over the sea of other competition that's out there, you know, I, yeah. I found that the most consistent response was usually something little. It wasn't a big thing. And in fact, actually, the other Cookies way around. and coffee and the lounge, yeah, exactly. Whatever. And it's yeah. and it's the same thing also why they didn't buy. It's it's mm. it's all these little tiny little things that just goes into creating I would say a more confidence or uh, comfortability with with the dealership and why I should do why I should do business with them and and it starts online. It starts online, right? Your first impression. I mean, I remember, you know, before my dealership had a website, your mm. meet and greet was your first impression. And we, right. had, we had to practice that meet and greet verbatim. In fact, actually, the first dealership I worked at, if you if you show up in the morning, the manager would come and ask you the meet and greet. If you couldn't actually repeat it verbatim that day, you actually got sent home. 
You couldn't sell cars that day. Right. And right. I don't think you can get away with that anymore. <laughs> At least not up here in Canada. You probably could still get away yeah. with it in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it was that discipline. That we're, we're going back to that discipline. Those disciplines of the of those little things that makes a big difference. Now our first impression is online. And and that first impression means everything. So we have to look at the little things. on. And like, like I'm sure you probably see the exact same thing. All right. Get, let's, and if let's you can get example. them in with that first impression online, that's fine. But I think going back to the dealership thing and putting all those little things, it's a really simple question you should ask yourself, like as an owner, like oh, I'm the CEO. I don't see myself as a CEO. I'm part of this team and <laughs> yeah. I work with these people. Do I make boss decisions? Of course. But you, what you have to ask yourself, I feel like, um, as a manager is, do I want to be ho-hum? Or do I want to be world-class? And that's if you exactly. want to be in the middle, then that's okay. That's what you're going to be. If you want to be ho-hum, then just be that. But if you want to be world-class, which is ideally what, where we all want to strive to, um, or where we should be wanting to strive to, you need to take care of those little things across the board and make sure that everyone is having, or as many people as possible, having a world-class experience. And if you ask any one of my guys they know, or any one of my team members, I'm not interested in being the biggest app dealer company or whatever. I'm interested in being the best and I'm interested in delivering what we said we were. And if I can't, I'm going to come back to you and tell you why and, and we can work it out uh, ourselves. But I'm not interested in being the biggest. I'm interested in being the best. That's it. You know, I, I got a perfect example. Did I ever tell you the story of how uh, we bought our minivan? Did I ever tell you that? No. Okay. Okay. So, um, I just. I've probably my... seen you in it a couple. Of times, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Thank God we sold that thing. I'm out of my minivan days. My kids are a little older now. They can buckle themselves in, so we got a nice big SUV. Yeah. I don't have to. God, that <laughs> minivan sucked. Um, oh, that's right. You bought that uh, Armada. Oh right? well, yeah, that thing's nickel and diamond me to death. But um, that's a yeah, whole other yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> Nissan didn't quite hit the mark on that one. Sorry, Nissan. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Nissan. <laughs> um, but um, uh, so. I had sold my dealership, so I don't I don't quite have that connection anymore. And I'm running the agency, and it's like now we got three kids, we need a minivan, so you know we want to get a town and country. I'm like, okay, that's cool. My wife mm. likes the way the town nice and countries car. look. Great car, whatever. I said, look, here's the you know nine. Cr- I used to drag bodies around in those things, you know. But- <laughs> you could fit you could fit two of them in there. It's, two stretchers. It's in a the two back body of the car. <laughs> I swear, we take out all the seats, and then you just put two bodies oh, in. I go to one hospital and the nursing home. Yeah, the whole thing. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> that's just, that's a, you just put that picture in my head, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it's two bodies. Um, but so, so I told her, I said, look, here are the nine Chrysler dealerships I work with. All right. They all have town and countries on their lot. All right. Just, just go on there, take a look at them. Let me know which one you want. And I'll call the dealership and we'll work, make a deal happen. All right. And she mm-hmm. comes back to me and she goes, well, I only found two. Two. Yeah. I only found two that have the sliding, sliding doors. I'm like, it's a town and country. They all have sliding doors. Every single one of them does. So she went through between the nine stores, probably there were, they probably a total of 50 or 60 pre-owned town and countries between all nine locations. Right. Well, she only found two where someone actually was smart enough to take a picture of the button that was the sliding doors. So mm, that was right, the, right, so right. she was like no there's oh, only the two the mechanical door yeah, yeah, yeah there was the there was there's only two there's only two that have the power sliding door because it was the only yeah, two yeah. dealerships that actually took the picture so it's the little things it's the little yeah. things like we yeah. it, it, the little things make really really big differences and and ultimately that was actually one of the two that we actually ended up buying even though every other dealership <laughs> had one with sliding doors because they all came standard with it. Um, all wheel drive, I imagine, in Canada too, right? Wasn't it all wheel drive no, one? Front wheel drive, just big. No, numbers. no, uh, no. They did one, I think, actually at one point in time for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I had one. I had, well, we used. Uh, well, I didn't have one. The funeral home did, but uh, we had an all wheel drive, uh, like a deep, deep purple one when they when they started getting a little more pointy and cool <laughs> yeah, looking. I and I that. loved that thing, man. It was a fast uh, little uh, SUV or a uh, minivan too. Nice car. So, you know, last time we got to talk, we got to talk about what the new norm is. Now, look, we're in the norm. Now, look, with that said, mm. though, I still don't think we've actually dealt with the actual economics of this. We've only dealt with the social uh, uh, social impact of this. We've yet to feel the actual economics of this. Um, but I'm finding that in the last four months since we last spoke, there's been this snowball of change. <laughs> like, mm. like, it, it started yeah. off because we had to. Right? The pandemic forced us to. Right? 
got to go change, right? right? So start off really tiny and it's grown and grown and grown. And I've, I find that recently, depending on where you are in the, in the country, you know, it's like that snowball is either slowed down or it's actually continued to go fast. And, mm. and I think the, the more progressive dealerships out there are embracing the speed of change. Like they're like, yeah. yes. It's like, I'm on the change train and I'm not getting off. Let's stay on this yeah. thing. So I'm curious to see what you're seeing out there right now as far as that change train. <laughs> like, you get I to talk to a lot of dealerships. So what are you seeing? There's two things that I want to say is uh, when we first started, did you ever as a kid have be near the ants on a, like at a picnic or something? Oh, and they yeah. all got the trail, the trail to the, to yep. the ant hill, right? And you'd mess up the trail there. And then about an hour later, they'd all be back on the same trail, right? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's we're humans. That's what we're doing. So we got messed up off the trail because we got this global pandemic, get rid of, ah, whatever. And now I'm not saying we've tamed it by any stretch. We're having a terrible time down uh, here in the U.S. at the moment, or at least that's what we're uh, what we're seeing. Um, but we've adapted or kind of outmaneuvered it to some extent, at least so that we can continue to go. And as a result, I mean, the auto industry is jamming. I mean, June was out. Do, do you ask anyone? They had the best year month of June they've ever had um, because they all bought cars during the first beginning of that April, May. And they got, you know, they just sold them all out. And we, there's a shortage of used cars um, in the market. Um, but the change that happened with that is that I've been saying for years, 80 to 90 percent, 70 percent, you pick your percent, it doesn't matter, of people look online before they go into the dealership. So therefore, your pictures and video need to be there to the content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what you're seeing now is all of the big dealers, big corporations like Lithia has come out with Driveway, of course, G1 Group 1 has their own thing going out, Sonic's got uh, Echo Park and all these things. And what they're really realizing is now 100% of people are shopping online and we want all of our cars to be represented in a, I'm gonna use the same word again, consistent manner throughout the entire thing. And during this pandemic, gratefully so, uh, we made a really good deal with uh, Group One to get them kind of put together. Well, also, no, I think consistency the, uh, is huge. Like, if I was a dealer group right now, like, I mean, yeah. I, if I'm going to measure, I need everyone to be on the same playing field, right? Like, I need them all they playing ball actually, the exact same way. So it's like, and um, they're just actually you. realizing that right now. They're really realizing, like, oh, okay all 100% of my customers look online first. Oh, I need to improve this here. Whereas before it was like, eh, pictures and the content, it's not that big a deal. They come into the dealer, we sell cars, it's fine. It's not fine anymore, N no way. Like they're coming to us, not just us, but other companies as well that do the same things or similar things that we do. And they're saying, hey, we want this to all look the same across the board. And, and like I said, we took those, um, I think we're up around uh, 32, 35 group one stores now, and we've got them all in line and every single one is shot the exact same with that way that they wanted. They're all the pictures are in the same order. Everything is good and everything gets pushed out every day. Likewise, the same thing with Lithia. Um, you know, they have their GMs choose their vendors and they should, um, that's kind of how they roll. And um, we sat down with, uh, you know, their marketing crew before uh, driveway came out and we rewrote their best practices and said, hey, this is how you should be doing things uh, moving forward. Here's a few vendors to pick from. Um, so they're paying attention. They all want to have the Carvana model because I think they're starting to realize like, hey, it's not so bad of a model, even though they just finally turned a profit, right, Carvana. So, yeah, you can see it happening. It's no, I, I I agree. I, I I think the biggest change that I've seen um, has been the fact that we are now embracing internet customers as like real customers. You know, as if it wasn't like, there before. Well, which I know, is but bananas. that's that's the that's the messed up part. But it but it, but it's true yeah. though. I mean, like I can't tell you how many times I've been in a meeting and someone's like, oh, lose internet customers like like there's there, there's some foreign being or aliens or something like that but it's just like we, we've just yeah, always like, kind of looked at they all come from like, there <laughs> that's what i'm saying and, and i think as an industry that's probably one of the biggest changes that has happened i think as a blanket change for everybody is that everybody you know now doesn't look at as an internet customer as a different 
a, a different person or, or, or a sub level of potential opportunities. It's like they're treating right. each customer the the same, and an internet customer is equally, if not just as important or more important than any, someone to sit right in front of you. So it's just like yeah. the, 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 that separation doesn't seem to be there anymore. So I'm so I'm so glad to see that. And and now what I think that that means is is that now. You know, as our operations have kind of caught up to the customer, all right, now our marketing and our merchandising efforts have to get caught up to the customer. Um, right. You know, look, that first impression is happening online. So it's like, what mm -hmm. is that first impression I have of you has to come out in the marketing and marketing for a, a lot of for a lot of companies is your first impression. Your first impression of the company is whatever they have in market, the commercial right. that they ran or the and how billboard that brand that ties into it. Right? Exactly. And then yeah. you go to their website and you're just hoping that 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 is a consistent to what you saw in a video or a picture or a billboard. And you're hoping that now the online is going to match kind of the same thing. And this is where I'm finding dealerships are now beginning to struggle. And I love what you did. You guys did a commercial recently, and I want to talk about the commercial because it's freaking hilarious. Um, I'm smiling because it was just so fun. <laughs> it was. It was. It was so much fun. But but you guys nailed it on the head. You, you, this this combination of uh, edutainment, of education and entertainment, all into the same thing. And I'm thinking I'm. I'm I'm seeing that dealers are realizing that it, it's not enough for me just to put out content around 0% financing and huge monster rebates and all this other stuff. It's like, no, I actually have to bring value in my marketing efforts because that's my first impression. And the way to bring yeah. value when you first meet someone is to educate them or to entertain them. Tell, tell me a little bit about the commercial because you guys did such an amazing job of that. The, the the content that you're talking about now is like the 0.9% financing and all that stuff. Those are all like, you know, on the TV uh, stuff, but like for you, and I'll get to my commercial, I think in a minute, but like you got, what is it? MXX Solutions. Uh, 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 is it John Resurrection? Yeah, yeah. John, uh, John's over there. Yeah. He does some neat stuff. You got um, Mark, uh, Shoot, I forget his last name, but uh, from the Mahalo Agency in Camarillo, mm -hmm. uh, California, he does that fun kind of thirty-second spot thing. And and for us, um, full disclosure, like everyone's seen the Dollar Shave Club, everyone's seen the uh, was it the uh, soap uh, commercials and stuff, where basically you are presenting the uh, first. You're hitting them immediately right out of the gate with, "This is the problem," and ours was your photos are shit. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have, now we have everyone's attention, right? Like, what, what did you just say to me? What the hell? And then you're telling them, this is what you're doing. This is probably one of the solutions. And these are some of the other problems that you're going through with it. Now, you can use us or you don't. You can fire us. You can keep us. It doesn't matter to us. But it doesn't change the fact that you are still having the problem. So if you want us to help you out with this, we can do it. And that's really what the whole thing had to wrap up into. Um, and then it went into, uh, you know, we're all photographers, trained photographers here. Those aren't our jobs so much anymore because we're a tech company, but um, we're all well aware of how things work uh, for a camera and the point of view and everything. So uh, I, I wrote the, the, the script, I directed it. I have a really, my best friend is a cinematographer out of New York. He flew in for that. We hired a producer just so that I could have my, um, I didn't have to have my hands full on the days of the shoot. Um, we had uh, our director of operations, Lewis Norman, uh, come in and he was part of the talent as well. But then we hired a uh, professional actor out of LA that could just really deliver those lines. And everybody wanted me <laughs> yeah, to it was, do it was, that no, job. It was so good. I was like, there's no way I'm directing and acting in it. And more importantly, I don't feel, I feel good with you right now because we're talking in front of a camera. But when I have to tell something, I always feel like, oh, am I getting everything out? I don't know. And so I thought a professional actor is the way to go. And they do, and he, that kid was amazing, amazing. So um, overall, we're absolutely thrilled uh, with the commercial. We're absolutely thrilled that it got up uh, to the place where, you know, corporate Lithia, corporate G1, wherever it got up there and it got attention. And whether or not you think it's crass or whatever, we're all in the auto industry. 
if you can't make yeah, fun you, of ourselves, you laugh about like, it, then you're, what are we, you're you know, come on, we're not fooling anyone, you know no, what I mean? Like, and it's um, all out of fun. That was the most important part. Well, I, I see, I think one of the biggest takeaways, and, and guys, I'm, we're going to put a link, um, uh, for the video, um, might even try to maybe my team will try to insert some pieces of this um, as well as well, as we're talking as we're talking, but um, yeah. it, it's audience. It's specific to the audience. See, see, I, you knew who yeah. your audience was first, and then you worked backwards towards creative, and mm -hmm. and and that's and that's what I'm thinking that dealers right now. This is that's what they have to embrace. This is the other change that I want to see happen. Right, right. that that other change of look, we we've embraced internet customers as now being real people mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Now, right now now i think we have to embrace that our, right. our marketing all right has to go beyond just payments and interest and, and, and yeah like it's got to bring real value to the person but how do i bring real value to someone through through video is i first have to identify who that person, who the audience is, and then work backwards towards the creative, all right? Not not the other way around, you know what I mean? Normally it's like we just have a really good idea and we just run with it, right? No, this is yeah. actually saying, no, here's who we intend to show this to, here's who we intend yeah. to watch this, all right? Let's make creative for them, all right? And if we connect with them through education or entertainment, then they'll be more willing to actually want to listen to what message we have. So I think there's so many lessons there to be to be learned uh, from from that individual piece, and it sounds like it was super successful for, for you. It, it was it was really successful. Tons of leads, lots of new uh, you know dealers and and stuff like that uh, from it. But I think it was more successful from an internal uh, thing because you know it was a it was a home run because we all knew we felt good about it. We all knew we batted it out of the park. We all knew that we would make people laugh. And at the end of the day, like, I, I mean, I sure I would like to get business from, you know, investing in something um, like that. But I knew inadvertently it would happen because we're making people laugh. I, what I really wanted out of all of that was all the salesmen that hang out in front of the Toyota sign at Toyota, whatever, X, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to catch it on their phone in LinkedIn and go, holy shit, have you seen this? This is hilarious. And then just share it like that. And that's, I think, uh, you know, I think it's got 35, 40,000 views right now. And I think it, it happened. Well, that's, it, that's it, the it, ROI that we have to start thinking. Intended. All right, look, so much has changed yeah. in marketing. Um, Gosh, we, do, we do a whole podcast about what you know? is with HEC policies and everything. Like, like we we're, we're going to sure. lose our remarketing efforts. We we've, we've literally as an industry built entire marketing strategies just off the fact we can remarket to someone. And our frequency of our messaging uh, it seems to be more important than the quality of the content that we actually put out there. I can go on, but anyways. Um, sure. but, but what we're looking at now is that we have to. If we're going to be, if we're, we're going to be on our, our a game and we're going to nail that that first impression is, is that we we can't just put out crap anymore like we really do have to have to think about it and 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 the, we our expectations can't necessarily be well how many cars did i sell from it you know and that's it, always it's, it's, the thing and right? that, it, same for you it's like you didn't have your goal was not here to like how many clients i can do it's like how many people can i make smile how many people can i make laugh and giggle and share right and that that, and that if you is, can do that, ROI, right? you're going to get the awareness anyway. So it's like, it, it's kind of like I, I tell my, my kids, well, you know, I have a 15 year old. So the, the, the kid is always thinking about <laughs> the next newest, coolest yeah. thing. And I, I'm just like, if you, if you do the thing because you love it and you've heard Gary Vaynerchuk said this, and I'm sure you uh, have it in your toolbox, but you, if you do the thing that you love and you do it with a genuine respect for the craft or whatever it is that you, you don't have to worry about the money. It will just come because you are the force that is making the whole thing uh, kind of happen. And I use that really loosely right now because I know there's probably people struggling in business. Yeah, I and, know. I hear you. Um, and I get that. Um, but, you know, there's definitely smart decisions that need to be made within business. But do the thing, create the awareness, make people laugh, make people smile, make them feel good, get that feeling. And, you know, what you're doing people will automatically kind of magnetically come to you. That's what happens. I mean, that's really what happens. You don't have to worry but, about the sales because they're just going to happen. That's what happens when we put the customer first. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. look, look, you guys, 
spent good money creating a very entertaining piece of co- a piece of content, um, but yeah. you you put the customers enjoyment first before you know profitability mm. I, it's crazy because ironically you'll be profitable for it <laughs> like in this, yeah yeah well, and this is what i'm trying to drive wasn't, home like to we people did an right? roi thing where we go hey we're going to get this many customers if we do this and sure the marketing team is promoting it on youtube and all that stuff the way it should be done but you're 100 percent right it was more just like let's just we're going through a pandemic Let's just entertain the shit out of these people. They'll definitely laugh. They'll definitely share it. And if they want us to help them with their dealership, then we'll do it. Well, and, and that's building brand. That's building brand. Like, look, I run a marketing agency. And, you know, if if I had more of my clients spend more time investing, developing out their brand equity, I would actually be put out of a job. Um, so it's weird. I <laughs> yeah, actually work to actually right. be output out of a job because then we wouldn't have to rely on these, you know, the, the, this SEM constant, you know, stick more money and stick more money and stick more money. And look, the dealerships right. out there that have amazing brand don't have to spend as much monthly to acquire new customers because they keep them in their brand because of the value that they bring to them, even in the form of education or entertainment or convenience or simplicity, right? Like, I mean, we all want to pay for convenience, and so we'll, we'll connect with them that way. Um, look, uh, I, I, before I let you go, I, I wanted to ask this question. I want to make sure I ask this question um, mm. because you guys are on what I consider to kind of be the – the front, you know, the for, the forefront of what online merchandising is. And, you know, you. what do you see kind of being that next, next level? Like, I know, you know, we still haven't even reached the level that you guys have already built out. Yeah. But where do you You've see that next, asked, where do you, you see that next, next level? Time too. Do you mean in terms of, uh, the actual merchandising platform that will be shown to customers? Is that what you're Yeah, what are customers going to care? Is it gonna be more of like an AR or a VR type setup? Like where do we go beyond pictures and video? I think, uh, well, we have our own, um, you know, research and development that's going on with, the, uh, with LiDAR. And I think that the future is probably A, there's two parts to it. A, you need to make the tool that we're using to get the product that get the service completed Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. properly um user the most user-friendly and intuitive that it can possibly be and we're pretty intuitive right now but you always want to continue to move that the second thing is how that's presented to the customer and i think that you know a lot of these uh, companies uh, that do merchandising for auto dealers you know some of them are really hit the mark and I'm, i'm actually really impressed i haven't quite gotten um thoroughly convinced that these things are of the quality that I want to be involved yet in. And that is the, you know, that's in our R and D as well. But I really think, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably going to be somewhere along the, maybe, maybe not AR, but if we could scan a, a used vehicle walking around it inside and out, and then create that experience inside and be able to move the car in any direction we want. Um, that's, I think, the ultimate, um, the ultimate thing. And I, whether that happens next year or this year or whatever, there's so many auto dealers out there. There's going to be, again, app companies that come out mm-hmm. and they're going to mm-hmm. have this thing. But if you can't get the people to actually use the thing to put it on your website, you're dead in the water. And this is what oh, is happening 100%. with the bigger app companies that are out there. Te- and we have as good as how well someone downs. uses it. Like, like a tool is only as it, good as how well someone it's uses just it. It's just a tool. That's it. Exactly. That's it. We're a technology company, but the technology is just a tool. Uh, we're a service company. And we. Um, one of the things I really wanted to uh, go into uh, before we take off um, is that as you're looking for customers and your co- my customers are general managers of auto dealers. So 16,500 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of them, that's my market. Like that's, that is what it is, is any with any customer give them more time and they'll pay you whatever the fuck you want because you are removing so <laughs> a problem from them and they know dealer image pro or jason harris and company or whoever it is has the reins and that they can count on you to do that they don't mind paying for it because they know that you will get that done and so when you can take uh the the, the onus off their plate and it's reasonable and the value is there then you're in good shape um, overall. And that's, I think, what GMs want. They're busy outselling the last month. That's what they need to do. They <laughs> yeah. don't want to worry about pictures <laughs> no. and whether or not the app works on their employee's phone and the, give them the device. 
We watch over the whole thing and I'll let you know if there's any problems. Go. And that's it. It's a simple, solid process. And everything inside our dealership needs to be like that. I mean, we just, you know, yes. was, those little things, meetings that I had with my team would be like that, would just be like all the way down to just simply processing out how the hell we answered the phones. Like, yeah. I, I can't tell you, it's a little thing, but I can't tell you how many parts departments I call still today, <laughs> being in the business as long as I have, and people have been in the business even longer than I have, where it's like, sure. parts, please hold. <laughs> like, yeah. that's it I'm like wow I just had this amazing impression of you and your marketing efforts I went to your website and I got I got I'm like oh yeah I'm feeling good I'm feeling good and then I go call and then yeah it drops it's just I'm with you to be fair to be fair though people only you don't know what you don't know what you don't know right so you imagine you're that's why you have to take the time to have the discussion and there's these vendors that will promise you the world and you get them in there and you get burned and then you do it again and you do it again. And until you find the right one and that kind of thing, and we were looking for a good marketing company in the middle of the last eight or nine months. And mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that we found it. Um, but it took me a while. I was like up at night, like thinking like, where am I going to find the one? Cause they all promise oh, we got the best <laughs> SEOs yeah. and all this stuff. But like, when you finally find the one, he sent me a video and he was just like, here are your problems. This is how I'm going to solve them. And he goes, if you do it on your own, it's going to cost you this. If you pay me to do it, it's going to cost you this. I was like, sign me up. I'm done. Simple. It's convenient, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. He really had his message down. Uh, cloud consulting, amazing company. Yeah. Good guys. You know, um, I think anybody out there that's watching this right now, what you can really kind of take away from this is that y y you have to have a process behind every single little thing that gets done at the dealership. Those little things mean a whole lot to the customers. They also mean a whole lot to your employees. Um, hey, Peter, before I let you go, though, uh, for everyone out there watching, listening, and would love to connect with you and learn more about what you do and what your company does, what's the best way to do so? You can email me at peter at dealerimagepro.com. Our URL, of course, is dealerimagepro.com. And uh, if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, find me. And uh, today's my birthday, so you can wish me a happy birthday. Happy but birthday. But you don't have to buy me anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Peter, thanks again so much for taking the time to jam with me today. This has been a lot of fun. You have yourself an amazing day. <laughs> it's an pleasure every time. Thank you so much, Jason. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy Mob Podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to sign up to be a mobster at strategymob.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.